it down the left field line. It is gone! Live from the downtown Carmi studio, it's the Saturday Morning Sports Show. Live on 97.3 WRUL, 93.3 WROI, and online worldwide at WRUL.com. Good morning, sports fans. Welcome to the Saturday Morning Sports Show here on 97.3 WRUL and 93.3 WROI. Cole Carter and Chris Myers, J.C. Tinsley across the hall getting us on the air. The sports show is brought to you by Little Giant Grocery Outlet, Rice Motor Company, Hell Body Shop, First Mid Bank and Trust, Wabash Christian Therapy, Bush and Associates CPAs, People's National Bank, Hamilton Memorial Hospital District, Rush Appliance and Furniture, Cincinnati National Bank of Albion, Nancy J. Winter CPA, Cherry Street Automotive, Farrell Hospital, Taylor Eye Care, Roark Transport, Wabash General Hospital, and Invenergy. Well, the Carmine White County Bulldogs last night, losing in upset fashion to the Flora Wolves, 30-24 to was the final score. Flora Gets that much-needed fifth win to punch their ticket to the playoffs. Carmi falls to 7-2. and two. They've now lost two in a row after starting the year 7-0. and oh. And, Chris, there's no doubt that was a game last night that I don't think anybody outside of the town of Floor really saw coming. No, I I personally am still sitting here in shock. I, nobody saw this coming. And, you know, I, I don't know if I personally kind of overlooked them coming in with a 4-4 four and four record. Thought, you know, fully expected Carmi to take care of business you know this is a florida team we lost to hamco during the season um but the danger with them you know was that they were fighting for their playoff lives and that Cesar game you heard they they lost i believe it was 28 to 12 yep. but they scored 12 unanswered points the second half and according to coach simon who talked to us after the game that they got on the goal line twice yep. and could have tied it and didn't score so this was a dangerous team, and you know the the thing we had asked about the Bulldogs is how would they be mentally after that emotional, physical, just draining loss against uh, Johnson City, which the conference championship was on the line. You know how would we recover? And last night it, it was just like we were still in the after effects of you know week eight and. Credit the Florida Wolves. They just flat out got it done on both sides of the football. I think there was a lot of moving parts to it. Obviously, you mentioned the fact that Florida was 4-4. Four and four, And if you look at Carmine's history playing four or four teams in Week 9, it's always tough. Because then again, we talked about it a couple weeks ago when we played El Dorado when they were 2-4. and four. You're a 4-4 four and four football team. You're playing a 4-4 four and four football team. You're going to get their best game they've played all year. And there was no question that was Flora's best game they've played all year. And, and again, this is a Flora team. I've talked about them a couple of times throughout the year. They started the year off 3 0. Uh, they beat CZR, Edwards County, and then um, oh, in Viana. Lost, in Viana. Yeah. I know they beat them earlier in the year. They also beat El Dorado, a uh, close game at home. And I know El Dorado has played some better football at the end of the year. They only lost by 10 to Fairfield. John City ran over them. But, uh, and, and they talked about the close loss against Cesar Valier and then the close loss against Hamilton County. Uh, it seems like this is a Florida team that has been. Right at that, you know, five and four is kind of where you thought they would be looking on paper. But man, I'll tell you what, Chris, watch them play last night. It made me wonder how this team is only five and four and not a possible seven and two or six and three. They just they've got some playmakers and they played incredibly hard last night. They did, you know, and Malachi Tolliver, their quarterback, especially six three, hundred ninety pounds. I think you alluded to Cole. He's probably an all conference basketball player. Yep. Just a fantastic mm-hmm. athlete. He was a just a dual threat, passing and running, and just someone the Bulldogs ended up having no answer for. You know, early on in the game, you know, we um, I believe we had a fumble our first possession, but we recovered and got a stop. Um, but it just small things can spark spark teams that are desperate for a win. And there were two occasions, which I know you'll recap in the scoring last night, where Flora was third and long, and. The, well, the first possession they ended up scoring, there was a tip pass on a third and forever. Mm-hmm. It seemed like two Carmine defenders had it or were going to knock it down. The ball went up in the air, and the floor receiver just happened to get under it and get a first down. Yeah. Well, all it takes is a spark to start a forest fire. <laughs> and that one, and then a few possessions later, another ball that was just bounced up in the air, and the receiver caught it on his stomach going to the ground, just sparked the wolves and kept drives alive. But you know, again, th- this was the ultimate trap game. It really was. And Carmi just, I don't know if we just got lulled to sleep, what happened, but it just seemed like after 
Florida, which I'll let you know, you recap. After Florida tied the game, we just never recovered from mm-hmm. it. Yeah, st- uh, scoring started off in the first quarter. Carmelite fumbled on their first possession, uh, but it didn't hurt them. Florida would punt shortly after. Then the Bulldogs scored with 4.37 to go in the first quarter. Jackson on a six-yard run uh, into the end zone. And even at that point, Chris, early in the first quarter, you're thinking, okay, Bulldogs, they fumbled early. They got they got their feet beneath them, though, and, and they're going to eventually run away, run, run away with the game. But then in, in the second quarter, 7.27 to go, Florida puts together a long drive, cap it off with a Bo Propes five-yard run. He got the two-point conversion as well to tie the game at eight with seven and a half to go there in the second quarter. Carmine answered, though, an Isaac King six-yard run with 4.47 to go in the second quarter put Carmine up 16-8. to eight. And then again, Flora took time off the clock. Oh, that one of that uh, one of the plays on that drive was one of the pass plays that was deflected a couple of times. Uh, but John McGee ran in the seven-yard touchdown. Tolliver ran in the two-point play. All of a sudden, we're tied going into halftime, and even then, it just it felt like okay, Carmine's going to get it together. We talked about the Fairfield mm-hmm. game, uh, even maybe even the El Dorado game, a couple of just hiccups, but they eventually pulled away with it. Um, just kind of w- just kept on waiting last night for the Bulldogs to really turn things around, and Thor didn't let them. The Wolves scored with six oh seven to go in the third quarter uh, to take a lead there in the third quarter, and then in the fourth quarter. Isaac King on a 70-yard catch and run from Warren Leg with eight minutes to go. That tied the game at 24. So Floor got the ball with eight yeah. minutes to go uh, in the ball game, tied at 24. A couple of third down conversions. They killed the clock, took it all the way down to 34 seconds. And Malachi Tolliver with a quarterback sneak from one yard out uh, to give the Wolves a 30 to 24 lead at that point. Carmi Try to get something going in the passing game with 30 seconds left, but just couldn't get anything going. And Flora got the win, 30 to 24. But like I said, Chris, just you were kind of waiting for Carmi to hit that moment in the game where they were going to turn things around and eventually run away with it. But you just got to tip your cap to Flora. They would not let Carmi run away and win that game. Oh, absolutely. And when the when the game was tied in the second quarter, Carmi did have a chance for a possession with I want to say is he how much time was left? Not when two they minutes. Scored? Two minutes, and our offense just really stalled. You know, it was just kind of a, a three and out situation, and, and that hadn't been the case the prior two. So you you know uh, the concern was you know okay is this kind of spilling over to the offensive side? But like we both thought, Cole, that the Bulldogs would get together at halftime and recover. That opening drive for Flora, there were at least three times that we had them. One time was third and 15. And third and 15, third and 15, 15 third and 20. Something like that, yeah. And there another time was a fourth down. The third and 15, they converted. They snuck a, back, or a wing back out to the flats. Our secondary had to run deep with the wideouts and just ran about a 10, 15 yard out route, and boom, you know, Tolliver with the pass on the money first down another play it was fourth it was fourth and forever and, and there's also a couple yeah. of times where third I know there was one time on a third down long uh Tolliver's back to pass and O'Brien and Moore got a hand on yeah, him yeah that that's what I was got a hand mm-hmm. on him and he somehow yeah. just got away and four for guys, first down at least four players had their hands on him yeah. we thought it was going to be a sack and they're punting and he just played Patrick Mahomes and yeah. escaped that thing and got a first down. To me, that play, when he escaped that sack, that was the game changer. Mm-hmm. If we get that stop there, they're punting to us, and may, you know things might be different. But after that play happened, their their confidence level just absolutely went through the roof, and they just started just the what we do to people. They yeah. just methodically just you know grinded the ball down the field, and we just never recovered after that. To our credit, you know that long pass play from leg to king. You know, 758, we tied it. You know, I thought, okay, plenty of time to make some stops and do what we need to do. But Flora. We both knew Flora was not going to be oh in no. a hurry. Oh, yeah. no. And they weren't. And to their credit, I mean, ran almost over seven minutes off mm-hmm. the clock on that final drive and just put, you know, put the final nail in the coffin. So I mean, Something else, time of possession. Flora had the ball yeah. for 31 and a half minutes. Carmi only 16 and a half minutes. And that was the first thing I said this morning when you got here, Chris. It was like, it felt like Carmi just. Never had the ball last night. No, every single time, and you got. And we've talked to Kurt Simon a couple of times this year. You know, during that seven game win streak to start the season, everybody we played, Kurt Simon said, this team is capable of basically using their offense as their defense, mm-hmm. keeping their offense on the field and keeping our offense off the field. And that's kind of what Flora did last night. Yes, Flora drove the ball very well, but 
what they did is every time Tolliver went in the shotgun, that play clock was ticking down. He yeah. was letting that play clock down under five, and they were taking as much time as they could because their idea was, okay, if we stay on the field, that keeps Isaac King Company off the field, and that's mm-hmm. their best chance to win, and, and that's what they did to perfection. Absolutely. that was a, It was just not only a great drive, just how they did it, but it was smart. You, you, yeah. you pointed, Cole, they were so smart in how they handled the football that last possession, but – you know, you look at it, They categories that Karma has normally won the battle in, even in our loss last week, you know, there were some categories where we were winning the battle. I mean, they beat us in first downs, 19 to 12. We got outrushed. How many times has that happened I don't this think year? It's happened all it, year. it hasn't. We it didn't happen last week. 201 to 194. Of course, passing, they were 6 of 14. We were 1 of 3. You know, we don't, we, we're just not a passing team. And total offense, they they were 284, we were 264. Their third down conversions, they were 8 of 14. To me, That's that big. was the killer. That yep. was the killer. Eight and even of two, and two, two for two on fourth down. Those, those, and all of those third and fourth downs were just critical. They were backbreakers for us when they converted those. You know, To me, that, that was the telltale, how they converted third and fourth down. But, again, Cole, you're right. They were so smart. And you, you would watch Tolliver would just sit there and watch the play clock, and they weren't snapping the ball until less than five seconds. And you just got to tip your hat to him. You know, uh, Tolliver just played out of his mind last night. Yep. He, he looked like an all-conference player for sure last night. And their defense, you know, early in that game, it just looked like, as you said, Carmine was just going to do their ground-and-pound game and just march up and down the field at will. And it looked like it the first couple quarters. But that second quarter, the Wolves' defense just got extremely stingy, even forced us out of our formation we normally go to. We even mm-hmm. tried Try going to a double up. wing. Yep. Yeah, and it was just like just like the week before, a tale of two halves. Mm-hmm. And, you know, again, all is not lost. The Bulldogs, as Absolutely. we'll talk to you here in a minute, are, are in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. They have a chance to play another week. A lot of teams are putting up their pads today, but Carmine's going to keep playing. But – you know, they know there's things they got to correct, but the fortunate thing is they, they have another week to do that. Here is what head coach Kirk Summer had to say after the win, after the loss last night for the Bulldogs. Obviously a, a game that people didn't really see come, but you got to tip your cap to floor on the way they play. Oh, I have no question about it. They came to play, and they were, you know, they were playing for their playoff lives, and um, I give them all the credit in the world. They came out and shoved us around the whole game. Uh, you know, we started out doing some some okay things offensively, and but we just couldn't put the stop on them. Um, their quarterback had a really nice game; they did a good job. They just they they ran the ball really effectively, and we couldn't get them off the field. Yeah, can you talk about um, for them Malachi Tolliver? It just he was kind of. Where did this he's kid come slippery. from? He was yeah. a fantastic yeah, athlete. Yeah, he was. Was that something you were expecting from him? Yeah, I mean, he's he's done that this year. He not quite as good as he did it tonight, but um, I I give, I just give them all the credit in the world, and and you know, it's just there's something that we just have to learn from. You know, you know, we still there's a lot of people putting their pads up this weekend. We're not okay, and and you know, we we had a tough one a week ago. I had a tough one tonight. You're going to have a tough one in the playoffs because they're always tough. So you just got to get used to playing with that physicality, uh, with that type of physicality, if you want to win these types of games. And we didn't make enough plays tonight to do it. So yeah. it, it's a it's a tough spot to be in. Talk about last week losing that game. It, it felt like a season-ending loss just with the way the game was. But you guys again. You have a lot to play for. You're still going to absolutely have a good seed next week and a chance to win a couple of playoff games. But you got to imagine it's it's going to be tough for these kids to put these past two weeks behind them. Well, and that's where character comes into it. We'll find out what kind of character we have. You know, uh, you know, last week we knew it was going to be a difficult game against a real physical team, and we knew that Flora was always capable because I mean, just last week against Sester, the Sester didn't score in the second half. Uh, and Flora was on the goal line twice and didn't get in, and they were on about the one. I mean, they very easily could have, you know, taken down Sesser last week too. So um, you just got to, I mean, you got to prepare every week the same way. And um, like you said, we'll, we'll, you know, look at the film, learn what we can, 
and just again, this comes down to what kind of character we have. We've, you know, we had a, a a great season going where we hadn't lost a game. Now we've got, you know, two of them back to back, and of course it's hard to swallow. We're not used to seeing that this year, but um, we'll see how we do now. Now we now we really got to pick it up and play better because, like I said, the next games from here on out in this second season, when you get in the playoffs, they're all good. Um, they're all good. So. And not to belabor the point, Coach, but, you know, I, I just talk from here. I talk about maybe the emotional toll from last week might have carried into a little this week. I know you guys are going to put it behind you. And what's the message you tell your team this week? You, you know, you'll find out your opponent tomorrow. But regardless, what's the message you tell your team? Going well, forward? I mean, the message is basically just what I said, and that's yeah. what I just said to them. Now we really find out what kind of character we have as a group you know, you know, you guys around all your buddies and, and what we've done as a team this year and all the work you've put into it, you know, uh, this is this is a good test for us now, you know, mentally and physically. I know we got to, you know, Gavin Payton got hurt tonight and didn't play three quarters of the game, which which didn't help. You know, one of your one of your best linemen um, and hopefully we can get him back and healthy. But uh, it's just a matter of, you know, keeping your nose you know, and your eyes looking forward and, and working working hard at it. We've still got a good football team, and we've done a lot of good things this year. Uh, but, you know, we, we were faced with some adversity now. You know, we thought we were we were staring at a, a home playoff game for sure, and now I, I'd say we're probably on the road. Um, but that's the way it goes. That doesn't mean that you can't, you know, have a great week of preparation and learn from these two last two weeks. And, uh, you know, we don't like this feeling. And, well, that's, we've got to we got to really work at it to not have this feeling again after next week. Yeah. Well, regardless, you're in the postseason. Great season. We'll, again, as Cole will recap, we'll find out who we play next <coughs> week. And wish you all the best. Looking all right. Forward to wherever we're we'll going. get after it. We'll get after it. Thanks for your time, Thanks, Coach. Thanks. That's Kurt Simon again. The Bulldogs lose last night at home to Flora. Final score, 30-24, but like Chris said before, we heard that audio that Bulldogs still got another week at least to play. A lot of teams have turned their pads in today or Monday, but the Bulldogs are not one of them. And, and Chris, that, that, that means a lot. You really got to think about it. And I know that the Bulldogs had some pretty good highs this year. They started off 7-0, beat some pretty good football teams. Uh, but despite what's happened in the last two weeks, this team is still going to play in the playoffs. Could be at home next week. We'll talk about, here, talk about that here in a minute. But uh, still a lot to play for and a lot to be proud about if you're the Bulldogs. Yeah, you know, I mean, the accomplishment, the goal you always set for yourself as a football team every year, you know, if it's in order, number one, win your conference. Number two, you know, probably the – and I would see say, honestly, this is most teams' number one goal is to make the postseason because – like we talked about, football is only a nine-game season. <laughs> football is not like basketball where you're playing 25, 30 games. Baseball where you, a lot of number of games, everyone's in the Everybody postseason. In, yeah. Football is something where you have nine chances. you got you got to win five of them in most cases, sometimes six, just to qualify to play in the postseason. So that's every football team's goal. And if you accomplish that, you, you can definitely hold your head high and say, hey, we got a lot to be proud of. You know, they've exceeded their win total from last year, the team that got in last year, so improvement there. You know, have the last couple of weeks kind of been a little disappointment? Yeah, but at the same time, if you look at the overall picture, the things this team has done this year, you know, the way they've ran the ball, the way they've, you know, won seven games, you know, and they're definitely going to the playoffs, the things they wanted to do, the one to accomplish – for the most part, they've done, and and they've done it the right way. This this team's got a lot of character. You know, they they play whistle to whistle. They're good sports. They you know they represent our community well. They're just a great group of young men on that team. Coaches have done a great job with them this year. So, still a lot to play for. You know, I mean, we're still a postseason football team, and, and that's that in itself. It, that's so much to be proud of. One bright spot from last night there in the first quarter. Um, Isaac King made some history. Take a listen. Yes. Leg under center in the T formation. Ball at the Carmi 45-yard line. They turn. Give it off to King on the right side. King trying to find the edge. But the stiff arm gets out of bounds. He's got the first down. That's going to be a pickup of about 15. And that might be it. He's at 53. Gain of 15. That's a Bulldog first down. And that's it. He's got it. Isaac King is the all-time leading rusher in Carmi White County history with that first down run 
up to the floor, a 42-yard line. Congratulations to Isaac King. History here tonight in Carmine. What a what an outstanding young man. Pleasure to watch. Congratulations, Isaac. A record that a lot of folks thought would ever be broken by Logan Rogers about 10 years ago. Isaac King with a first down run there in the first quarter broke that record, and he is now the all-time leading rusher in Bulldog football history. Truly an incredible accomplishment by a great kid. Yes, absolutely, and just hats <laughs> off to him. You know, we talk about kids that work hard, you know, and there's a lot of them at, you know, whatever they do. And Isaac, if there was ever a young man who just – puts his nose to the grindstone and, and I've said this before being great at something it, it's not what you're doing at the actual event you know it's not what he does on Friday night it was what he was doing all summer mm-hmm. at you know at five six in the morning lifting weights running the, those things you do when no one's watching are where, how you get the results as an athlete it, it's the prep time you put in it's how hard you work how hard you practice how hard you dedicate yourself to the things that are being done on the times that are grinding. You know, football practice, mid to late season, we've said can be a grind. How hard are you working then? And and him and that whole team have just worked hard. And, you know, he'd be the first to give credit to his linemen, to his teammates, deservedly so. But watching him these past couple seasons has just been a pure delight, and congratulations to him. Isaac, with now over 4,100 rushing yards in his career, which if you – Really think about it and, and what <clears throat> Isaac has played in really two and a half seasons to get that many rushing yards. I know he's got a lot of attempts, but uh, you really got to tip your cap to truly one of the, obvious, stat-wise, the best running back in school history. But he passed a pretty good guy to get there. Um, Logan Rogers, who, again, held that record for a long time. Uh, he was fun to watch also. But, again, Isaac is now uh, the rushing king in terms of rushing yards and Bulldog history. Chris, I'll, I'll have you throw on your trivia cap here. So, obviously, okay. Logan, Logan Rogers bumps down to two. Can you give me the guys behind them in terms of rushing yards? Well, I had the cheat sheet. I saw the <laughs> list. I don't have it in front of me. I wanted to say, was it uh, Chase Saylor that's right behind him? So Chase Saylor is in. This would be third, fourth, fifth, sixth place Chase is in. Okay. Uh, I know. Let me think here. Give me one second. I know uh, Troy Dietz going way back. Troy is in behind somewhere. Chase, so he's in okay. seventh place. One more guess. Let me get, uh, <laughs> give I you one more get guess. This right. Brandon Pringle. Is Brandon P- oh, Pringle Brandon. is in third place okay. there in 99 through 2001 with a little over 2,300 yards. Jeff Haley from back in the early yes. 70s with 2,167. Yes. Andrew Burnett with 2,135 in fifth place, then Chase in sixth. With twenty one seventeen, Troy Dites with uh, two thousand sixty five yards there in the late seventies, and Bart King with two thousand seven yards in the late nineties as well. Bernie Bad- uh, Benny Bradley from the fifties with nineteen fifty five, and Brian Rich from the early nineties with nineteen thirty seven. But top that list is Isaac King now with over forty one hundred rushing yards in his Bulldog career. So big again, congratulations to Isaac King. Other scores from around the area last night in the conference and out of the conference. Johnson City all over CZR, 65 to nothing. They complete the undefeated season and officially uh, complete that Black Diamond Conference Championship as well. Cesar Valier takes down Hamilton County 39-7. to El Dorado defeats Edwards County 48-15 to and Fairfield will take on Viana Goreville Later on today, in the Little Lion Eye Conference, Alney defeats Casey Westfield 34 to 6. Lawrenceville defeats Marshall 41 21, and Newton defeats Paris 49 to 15. Quite a few non-conference games around Southern Illinois. Minton defeats Inno Jonesboro 55 to 14. Carterville all over Harrisburg 49 to 7. Lions complete the 9 and 0 undefeated season. Murfreesboro over Duke Coin 47 to 13. Nashville over West Frankfurt. 56 to 19, Pickneyville over Massac County, 32 13. Mount Vernon hands the Golden Aces of Mount Carmel their first loss in 20 some odd regular season games, 34 33 in double overtime in the Snake Pit uh, to win that one. I listened to the very end of it on the way home last night. Uh, that's a pretty good Mount Carmel team to beat. The Mount Vernon's had a great season uh, despite having to forfeit those two wins earlier in the year. Uh, Marion defeated Matt Toon 42 20. And I believe that's pretty much all the relevant scores in terms of around here. But yeah, I was kind of surprised with yeah. the fact that Mount Carmel uh, fell at home against Mount Vernon. Yeah, I was getting uh, 
scores texted to me and I saw that one, I was like, Oh wow, that was that was definitely a barn burner in the pit. I think at one time Mount Car or excuse me, Mount Vernon had Possibly a two-score lead in that, a minimum one score late in the game, and Mount Carmel tied it late to send it to overtime from what I recall. Well, Mount that's Carmel, right. a lot like Carmine in the first few weeks, they hadn't played anybody. You know, they had been right. beating teams by 40-plus points. So they was last night was kind of their first game that was a barn burner, and uh, the Rams got the best. But the Aces still finished 8-1. and one. They're going to be a top uh, yeah. And the Rams, five seed and the Rams are probably a four or five A school yes, as well. Absolutely. With their enrollment. Yeah. So Mount Carmel, the three A this year, really, yeah. you know, hanging with a, a much larger school. Yeah. So looking over in Indiana first round of sectionals was last night. Gibson Southern defeats Vincennes Lincoln sixty three to forty two. Uh, North Posey defeats Forest Park forty one twenty seven. Memorial over Bossy. 52 to 20. Boonville over Harrison 41 21. Wright shuts out Central 49 nothing. Owen Valley defeats Mount Vernon 35 to 14. Heritage Hills over Madison 32 zip. Modern Day over Perry Central 35 to 6. And that's about all of the Evansville scores from last night. So again, the Bulldogs, they're 7-2. and two. They're still going to be in the postseason. Now the question becomes, what will their postseason fate be? Uh, Steve Saucy, who does some bracketology stuff for the IHSA, his prediction, and this is, again, just a prediction, but he thinks Carmine will be a 7 seed in the 2A South bracket at home next week against Arthur uh, Arthur Atwood Hammond, which is a school up by Decatur. They're going to come here. That's the prediction right now. Uh, but he also predicts that Johnson City, a two seed, will play Belleville off to the 15 seed. And Bulldogs could see JC in the second round if they get there. But again, it's all predictions from this point forward. Uh, there's a couple of schools that are kind of in the mix that Carmi could see next week. Uh, if they're at home, it could be a Nashville, could be a, a Chester, could even be a Fairfield. There's a couple of teams that are in the possibility. Um, obviously, losing last night doesn't help you seed-wise, but uh, you never know what the way things go. It, it end up could be in a blessing for Carmi, depending on what happens tonight when we get to playoff pairings. Yeah, you know the eight and one. Obviously, you're you're getting a better draw when you're seven and two. Then the odds are you're getting a team with an identical record to you, and. So it's going to be it's going to be a challenge regardless. You go in at nine and zero, a five and four team could still be a buzz saw. Mm -hmm. So you know playoffs are all bets are off the table yeah. because you know good teams are playing good teams, and you know if you look if Johnson City if that holds, which we're not sure if it will, if if Alt Hoff does get in, that's you know and they, and, it, and they were four and four and lost last night. So I, I'm not sure so, if that's up to date. Yeah, that may not be. I was going to say if that was the case, you know, you, we we know the schedule Alt Hoff plays is mm -hmm. you know pretty pretty salty. So yeah. that would be not a fantastic not a, draw for, for Johnson, Johnson City. City. No, and, that, and that's the thing, Chris. Yeah. You know, people. Obviously, nine and zero. Yeah, conference champs. That's great and all. But sometimes, if you think about Carmine in twenty eleven, they go nine and zero and play a five and four Carlisle team that comes in here and beats them. Sometimes, yeah. being a lower seed can benefit you, especially oh, oh, in yeah. Illinois when when every conference is different. The more north you go, the better the football is. And sometimes, a five and four team up north near Springfield is better than nine and zero team down here. So. You're exactly right. If you're Carmine, you're upset with being seven and two. That very well could be a blessing in disguise compared to what JC might face next week, compared to what some other higher seed teams uh, might see next yeah, week. Yeah, I think it happened to Chester a few years ago. Chester Absolutely. went yeah. nine and zero. Oh, happened a to El Dorado. Happened season. to Fairfield a couple of times. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Chester ended up drawing. I think it was maybe this team, this Belleville Altoff team, or one of uh, Breeze Modern Day, one of the one of those Catholic two, yeah. schools that yeah. didn't have the multiplier. And for those listening at home, um, most Catholic schools play, like, for instance, last year our opponent in the playoff, Breeze Modern Day. Their schedule, I mean, for the most part, they're playing a four, sometimes five A schedule. Yeah. So what I mean, they, the last two weeks they've played Effingham and Mount Zion. Those two yes, teams kind of a, two tough teams. Yeah. So what they do, if, if those teams have two consecutive seasons where they don't make the playoffs, they do what's called remove the multiplier meaning they're going to play based on their enrollment, not on their schedule. Yeah. Because a lot of, you know, just to be frank about it, a lot of the those private schools can, you know, they can kind of recruit mm -hmm. players. Kids can come in from regions outside the district. So if there are some good athletes, good players that want to go play there, they can do it as long as they pay the tuition and go. So 
It's you not know, always fair, is what no, you're saying. No, exactly. <laughs> I'm trying to be politically correct, but the bottom line is it's not always fair. Yeah. So when they have that season where the multiplier is removed, instead of going and playing a 4- or 5A postseason schedule, they drop down to the class they're in. So in that year for Chester, they drop down, all top, drop down and played a 2A schedule yeah. when they're normally a 4- or 5A team. Same yeah. for the Bulldogs last year. They faced a modern A team that is quite honestly a, a solid 4A schedule. And got to drop down to two A in the playoffs. Yeah. But by the looks of things, I, I don't think that we'll see anything too unfair like that. It seems yeah. like everybody that's in uh, deserves to be in and is right in the same um, class ranks. But we'll, again, things can shuffle around. It's all predictions. Uh, we'll know Carmi's fate officially tonight around eight o'clock when the IHSA announces uh, the playoff pairings. I know you can watch that on Channel uh, channel 3 WSIL if you get that. Uh, you can also watch it on the NFHS network. Uh, the IHSA will broadcast that beginning at 8 o'clock, I believe. And the they, website, does yeah, is it I'm not sure if they do it on the IHSA tonight? website, I'm yeah. not, but I'm sure they'll update it as soon as it happens. Yeah. Uh, I do know if you are going to watch it live, they do start with 1A, so you can expect the 2A bracket to come out around maybe 805, 810 area uh, to see who Carmi will play. And, of course, we'll keep you posted on the WREL Facebook page as soon as we find out uh, the playoff fate. Again, that all comes down, uh, comes out tonight, and we'll see how a lot of teams fare. And, again, it'll be interesting to see how some of these higher seed teams get matched up against. I'm interested to see how the Indians uh, get faced and who they'll face next week. If you're a football fan, it's, it's a cool thing. It so is. Saturday really night, is cool. You know, this Saturday night, you know, waiting to see, hear who you play, it, it really is neat. It, it, you know, it's kind of anticipation, buzz all day, and then when it happens, then you get the reactions from everybody, everybody texting Absolutely. each other. Hey, guess what? You know, <laughs> can you believe it? Oh, this is great. Or, ooh, this is tough. Or, you <laughs> yeah. know, the yeah. different reactions depending yeah. on who, who plays who. Yeah, we'll go ahead and take our first break of the day. We'll be right back here in a few minutes on the Saturday Morning Sports Show on 97.3 WRUL and 93.3 WROI. Welcome back to the Saturday Morning Sports Show here on 97.3 WRUL and 93.3 WROI. Cole Carter and Chris Myers, J.C. Tinsley across the hall getting us on the air. Appreciate that. And we'll go ahead and take a look at the scores from this past week at Carmi High School. Back on Monday, the Lady Bulldog volleyball team defeated Harrisburg 25-11 and 25-16 on their senior night. Also on Monday, the Carmi JV football team lost to Johnson City 28-8. On Tuesday, the volleyball team then traveled to Grayville and defeat the Lady Bison 25-14 and 25-23. On Wednesday, the JV volleyball team went to the NCOE tournament and went all the way to the championship before losing to the host Lady Fighting Cardinals. Uh, They're in the championship game, and the volleyball team is taking part in the Fairfield tournament today to wrap up their regular season. So best of luck to Chris Lucas and the Lady Bulldogs. The Carmi golf team had their end-of-the-year banquet earlier this week. Congratulations to Ava Sheever. She was named the girls' team MVP. Kinley Carter was named the girls' most improved player. On the boys' side, Zach Roark took home boys' MVP, and Connor Newell took home boys' most improved player. So congrats to all the Bulldog and Lady Bulldog golfers from this past season. And back on the volleyball note, they begin their regional action this week on Tuesday. They will travel to Mount Carmel. They are technically the two seed in that regional. They're the four seed on the southern half of the Pickneyville sectional. So they'll play on Tuesday against the winner of five seed Mount Carmel and ten seed Harrisburg. They play on Monday. So Carmel will play the winner of those two games on Tuesday. Uh, If they win that game, they'll advance to the championship on Thursday against the winner of Hamilton County against uh, six-seed Benton and nine-seed El Dorado. So Benton and El Dorado play on Monday. Hamco will play the winner of that on Tuesday. And if Carmike gets to that championship game, they're going to have to probably face a tough Hamilton County squad uh, who is the one seed in this bottom part of the sectional. Uh, so it's going to be a tough matchup for them if they get there, but they got to get past the first round first. So, again, best of luck to Chris Lucas and Lady Bulldogs this week as they begin their regional play. And uh, as scary and as as crazy as it seems, basketball season uh, about three weeks away. And it's that close. <laughs> it's that wow. close. I know the first Lady Bulldog game is, I believe, November 14th. And the boys start, oh, I think the 22nd. They're going to be at home against Gallatin County. But, yes, yeah, somehow we have – and the fact that it's already week nine, and I know Carmine's got another game, and hopefully another two or three more games, but the fact that we are already through the regular season, 
and, and the fall sports uh, season is crazy to me. It is. I mean, it's just like we literally blinked an eye. We were at the Gator Bowl getting ready for this <laughs> yeah. season, and now, yeah. and also winter sports wrestling will be starting Absolutely. as well. And, and, so, and Chris, yeah. earlier this week, you were, I saw you were hired on to be an yeah. assistant wrestling coach. <laughs> yeah. Congratulations there. Well, and, thank you. And uh, keep busy, I'm sure, yeah, during the winter time. Just keep me busy. You know, I, I, I just have to be honest, I didn't wrestle in high school, but I got to make sure it's not jumping off the top rope, dropping elbows, nothing like that. It's, this is actual real wrestling. So, but looking forward to it, and have, have a chance to work with uh, Coach Golson and you know the bunch of outstanding young men this winter and take a venture I've never taken before. So, yeah. well, there were some other uh, there were some other new hires uh, in the athletic athletic department for Carmi as well at the school board meeting earlier this week. I do know that Justice Stubblefield, former three-sport athlete, he was hired to be an assistant boys basketball coach with Kevin Wolf. Also, Mark Stineback, he's going to be helping out as well as a volunteer assistant. Uh, Justin Simmons is going to help out Clinton Wolf on the girls' basketball side. And at the junior high level, Mike Zaranti will be the eighth-grade girls' basketball coach. Uh, also, I know Logan Bailey was hired as a sixth-grade boys' basketball coach. Uh, and again, Chris, you were hired to be an assistant wrestling coach for uh, this year. Getting to work with one of the best, uh, Terry Golson, one, oh, yeah. one, one of Sarge. the best guys. Yes. Sarge, yes. Just, he, he is <laughs> he's a character. <laughs> over 30 years in the wrestling program, and he's just a tremendous person in our community. A lot, you know, he's a former administrator, teacher. So many, you know, people have known him through the years, and I, I you know, from – not even be involved in wrestling, just you know, being an outsider looking in, seeing how the the boys he's had over the years respect him and the solid program, you know, to say the least, solid. He had uh, a young man, I think Titus Wood went to state last year, yep, he so did. he's had some wrestlers over the years qualify for the state tournament, and you know, it's just done an outstanding job with that program for over thirty years. Yeah, it's a crazy time of the year, winter sports yeah. season with boys and girls basketball, wrestling, and everything else going on, but. Yeah. Uh, it's always a fun time also it when is. the sports year yep. gets a little colder outside and the indoor sports really get to get into full swing. We'll go ahead and take our second break of the morning. We'll be back in a few minutes right here on the Saturday Morning Sports Show on 97.3 WREL and 93.3 WROI. The Saturday Morning Sports Show here on 97.3 WREL and 93.3 WROI. Cole Carter and Chris Myers, J.C. Tinsley across the hall getting us on the air. We'll go ahead and start with our terrible 10 pickums for... This week in our national sports segment, uh, neither me or Chris did too hot last week. I think the first time all year I've had a better record than Chris uh, in terms of the week. I went five and five. Chris went four and six. Puts Chris at forty-eight and twenty-two on the year. Ouch! I'm behind him at thirty-seven and thirty-three. So you still got a comfy lead in terms yeah. of the overall standings uh, here in the terrible ten pickums. But yeah, neither of us did too hot. Uh, well, I knew you we missed all except one college game. I missed all but two college games. Oh. And uh, the NFL, we pretty much picked the same teams and got two of them wrong. So. Well, when, the, when Alabama lost, I knew it was going to be a bad weekend for me. And then Green Bay, when they lost to the Jets yeah. badly, I was yeah. like, well, this wasn't my weekend. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> no 10 no week for you this week. No. <laughs> uh, but our, a couple of good games uh, going on today and tomorrow in college and the NFL. Five college games, five NFL games on our schedule. We'll start with the college games today. Number 14, series. Syracuse at number five, Clemson. Everybody on Twitter is saying this is the game of the upset, but I, I don't. If it was in Syracuse, maybe. Uh, but I'm going with Dabo and the Tigers at home with this one. I'm probably going to do the same thing. You know, Clemson hadn't been as strong as I thought they'd be this year, but you know, if you look at Syracuse's schedule, they haven't played an extremely yeah. strong schedule. Other than you, know, you could say, well, they played a ranked team in NC State last week, but I still think Clemson at home is just going to be a little too much for them. Yeah. So. The game of the week in the Pac-12, that, that's saying a whole lot. Number 9, UCLA, <laughs> at number 10, Oregon. Uh, this is going to be interesting. Oregon, a little bit underwhelming with Bo Nix at quarterback this year, but, of course, UCLA, they're having a great year with Chip Kelly at the helm. Ooh, Oregon's a tough place to play. I'm going to go with the Ducks here. I'm going to have to go out, so I'm going to go with UCLA. Again, I, I think Chip's... Chip Kelly, if you remember when he was at Oregon, where he was you know, about a decade ago, they had that dominant run with Mariota, mm-hmm. and you know they 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 were national championship contenders every year. It feels like he's starting to get UCLA headed that way, so I'm going to say UCLA. So Oklahoma State at home after a tough loss against TCU last week. They're number eleven. They are hosting number twenty Texas, and uh, mm, this is very tough. interesting. Yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with the Longhorns here. Actually, I'm gonna go Texas. You know, it's very tempting for me to do that as well. Um, 
but I think Oak State at home, the Pokes will have just enough to get it done. Reasonable, very reasonable. Uh, number eight, TCU. They're trying to make a little playoff push. Uh, they host number 17, Kansas State. I will go with the Horned Frogs yet again this week. Same here. They're really they, they're starting to get something going down there in TCU, so I'll agree with you. Final college game of the day in the SEC, number 24, Mississippi State. At number six, Alabama. I don't, ever, I don't think Nick Saban's ever lost two games in a row. Especially coming back home, I'm going Bama here. I'm doing the same, but boy, I tell you, and it was Paul Feinbaum, the ESPN SEC analyst, who pointed this out. Alabama is basically two plays more or less from being a three-loss team right now. Yeah, you know, they're they wrong. So their defense is not what, what it used to be. You expect yeah. Bama to be. So I'll go ahead and pick them, but I, I don't think it's going to be a blowout by any means. I agree. Now on to the NFL. You get the Lions at the Cowboys tomorrow. I believe Dak Prescott is making his return, his first game since week one. I'm, I'm done with the Lions. Every time I pick them, they <laughs> You're lost. Not wrong. So yep. as much I'm as I hate to you. do it, I have to pick the Cowboys. Yeah, I was kind of thinking the same uh. thing, but I think every time we've picked the Lions this year, they've lost by 20-plus points. Yeah. Um, Interesting game tomorrow in Cincinnati. Kind of a surprise. The Atlanta Falcons, they are at the Bengals. Uh, uh, Bengals are kind of starting to pick things up a little bit. A big win last week in New Orleans. I'm going with the Bengals here. I will too, but I, I'm just uh, the Falcons. They beat the Niners last week, <laughs> and the Niners get more people hurt. Well, hey, and, hey, you lose to the Falcons, but you do get Christian McCaffrey well, in return. I saw that, yeah. It, I'm kind of mixed on that because – the Niners are the most injury-riddled Injury team, team yeah. in the league. They have half again this year. Half their starters are out on both sides <laughs> yeah. of the ball. So what do they do? They trade for a guy who's been injured all the last two seasons. Yeah. So figure. I mean, if you talk about rolling the dice, they did. If yeah. it, if he's healthy, great. If he's not, then they just gave up another mm-hmm. draft for yet another hurt player. Yeah. So I know I'm, I'm the old man. Get off my lawn <laughs> this morning. So. <laughs> Uh, next game, this is tomorrow afternoon, the late game, uh, Jets at the Broncos. Jets have been the surprise of the NFL this year so far. I believe they're, what, 4-2 and two now, and, mm-hmm. and the Broncos kind of a surprise in the opposite way. Uh, they have not looked very good. They're 2-4. and four. Their offense is just awful. Yeah. So um, I'm going to go with the Jets. It, it, I was going to say, it's hard yeah. not to pick the Jets here. Well, and the Jets head coach, Robert Sela, was the 49ers yep. defense coordinator when they went to the Super Bowl. Yep. And tremendous defensive coach. You saw it last week, mm-hmm. four fumbles and sacks galore and turnover block punt so you know i'm gonna go ahead and j-e-t-s i'm gonna go with the home team here obviously because we've picked the same games five in a row now i gotta get some ground on you but i'm gonna go with the broncos here (laughs) eventually i think they're gonna turn things around with russell wilson but man they have just they've been hard to watch first few weeks of the season kind of like my steelers but 10 10 points is a is a good game for them if they score 10 points they're happy it's how bad it's been another late game tomorrow the seahawks at the chargers uh, Seahawks have been surprisingly good this year, but I'm going to go with the Chargers here. I'm going to agree with you there, too. When the Chargers are healthy, you know, they're, yeah. they're kind of a sleeper. And then the Monday night game, uh, the Bears at the Patriots. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm going to go with Belichick and the Pats here. Yeah, Bears on the road just haven't been able to put together four quarters. So, yeah, I'll probably have to lean that way, too, and go with Darth Vader and his team. <laughs> <laughs> so there's our terrible 10 picks for this weekend. Lots of... Interesting games in both college and the NFL. And again, Chris leads the all the uh, overall standings this year, forty-eight to twenty-two. I'm um, thirty-seven and thirty-three. So before we really wrap things up this morning, again tonight we'll find out the Bulldogs' playoff fate in the IHSA uh, playoff pairing show begins at eight o'clock. You can watch it on Channel Three WSIL or on the NFHS network. But uh, you know, Chris, I'll be watching, and and again, I just I I hope the Bulldogs get a good draw, and um, I, I what I really hope the Bulldogs do is. You got to forget the last two weeks. Yeah. You got to forget forget what has happened. Okay, it's a whole new season right now, and this team can go back to playing how they played, you know, second half uh, against Fairfield, how they played against Sesser, a good Sesser team. This team can win a couple of playoff games. I have no doubt about that. But with the way they've played lately, they haven't, and that's okay. But they've got to find a way to forget the past two games and move on. Oh, that's exactly right, Cole. You know, the postseason, you wipe the slate clean. It's a new season. It's a thousand percent intensified, tougher season, but you're right, it's new. A lot of teams are going home right now. The Bulldogs have another chance to play. So as hard as you know, last night especially, as difficult as that a pill that was to swallow, as shocked as we all are, 
there's a new day. Mm-hmm. There, you know, we we can still live to fight another day, and this team just has to find a way to rally mentally. They have to realize we have to play consistent football for four quarters, not for two. Mm-hmm. Defensively, especially, we've got to make stops on third downs. We have to get teams off the field. If we can recapture some of that, and quite honestly, we got to find a little bit of balance offensively because in the postseason, you know, as we've seen. You know, you you have to be able to adjust to some things. So there's a, there's a lot of things the Bulldogs are going to have to do better. But at the end of the day, the great news is they are in the postseason. Mm-hmm. These boys are living to fight another day and have another great opportunity to play football on a Saturday afternoon, which was their goal. And we're all looking forward to them. Wish them all the best. And hopefully at home. There is a yes. good chance Bulldogs will be at yes. home. Uh, but you never know. They're going to be right around that 7-10 to 10 seed range. Obviously yeah. the top eight seeds will be at home. Bottom eight will have to go on the road. But, again, we'll find out yeah. tonight uh, when the Bulldogs' fate will be announced the, during the IHSA playoff pairing show. And stay stay glued to your phone. We'll be sure to keep you up to date on the WREL Facebook page and such uh, to let you know where the Bulldogs will be and who they'll be against next Saturday when the IHSA playoffs begin. So that's going to wrap things up for us this morning. Don't forget, coming up at 10 o'clock is the Little Egypt Saturday short Showcase with Luke Nelson coming up on 97.3 WREL. Back to regular tunes on 93.3 WROI. So for Chris Myers, for J.C. Tinsley across the hall, I'm Cole Carter. Have a great weekend, sports fans.